thank you very much for joining us this evening. We're excited that you've chosen to spend your Sabbath afternoon with us. This has been, we have a wonderful program in store for you. We are nearing what has been a successful camp meeting, Camp Christ for the Crisis. This evening we have a wonderful program that we're going to focus on the music ministry that is in the South Atlantic Conference. Night after night for the past few days, we've been focusing on the preaching ministry as well as the singing ministry in our conference. Today, we're going to make certain that some of the ministries that we, are, we have in our conference are spotlighted. And to help us spotlight some of those ministries, we're, we have two of our leaders with us. We have Elder Calvin Preston, who is the vice president of this great conference. Um, he is the director for evangelism as well as the ministerial director for our conference. We have also with us Elder Kim Gator. Elder Kim Gator is the vice president for education. Elder Gator, Elder um, Preston, thank you very much for being with us um, this evening. I don't know about you, but I've been blessed every single night after night, morning after morning. The music ministry in this conference is second to none. Absolutely. Uh, the, the musicianship is so amazing. Uh, that I was blessed by it. I'm pretty sure you were blessed by it as well. So today, we're going to feature some of those songs that we have been blessed by uh, this week. Now, we are not just going to listen to um, our English churches, but we also have some uh, Hispanic brothers who will be sharing with us some of the songs that have blessed their souls for so long. Right now, we're just going to jump right into it. And afterwards, we come back, we're going to share some information regarding the composition of this conference. Right now, we're going to play two songs, um, show two, two songs from the Gethsemane Church in Raleigh, North Carolina. The first song will be from Latanya Jackson, who will sing Jehovah Sabbath. And the second song will be from Iris Ray, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. Enjoy. Happy Sabbath. My name is LaTanya Jackson, and I attend Gethsemane Seventh-day Adventist Church in Raleigh, North Carolina. It is a pleasure to be with you today. The song I'm going to share with you is Jehovah Sabbath. And we are so grateful that God is not only the God of the Sabbath, but every day of the week that he dispatches angels to encamp all around us to keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. So when we're in God's hands, whom shall we fear? I shall not fear the arrow by day, nor shall I fear
Gethsemane Seventh-day Adventist Church in Raleigh, North Carolina. We are so thankful that God is someone that we can trust, depend on. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus is the name of the song that goes into through it all and out of that is tis so sweet. Tis so trust in Jesus. 
Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to Just to It's so sweet to trust in Amen. Jesus. Tis beautiful so songs. I want to thank Sister Jackson Jesus. as well as beautiful songs. Sister Ray for those Sister wonderful Jackson renditions. As well as Pastor Preston, um, the South Atlantic Conference was established in 1946. So this makes 75 years that we've actually been in ministry, being faithful to the Gospel Commission to teach and baptize and preach. 
years, from Elder Singleton all the way to Elder Winston. This administration has been faithful. Now, we want some more information as to who um, our leaders are so we can be more informed going forward uh, f throughout the next year. Pastor Brown, it's my joy and a delight to just share with you whom God has blessed us with. Mm -hmm. As you just said, our conference is 75 years old this year. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what Elder Singleton and our forefathers would say now yeah, as yeah. they look at this conference from whence it, yeah. it has come. Uh, but God has blessed us with some wonderful leadership, and God is doing some mighty great and awesome things through this leadership. But let me just present them to you uh, at this time. All righty. We, uh, maybe we're going to start with our administration. Okay, well, let me let me uh, move ahead. Uh, as you know, our okay, there we go. There we there we go. Uh, Elder Winston is our conference president over the last perhaps nine and a half years who has offered a, a, um, great leadership. God has blessed him, anointed him, used him to cast vision to lead us to higher heights. Now standing with him and supporting him is Elder uh, David Smith, our executive secretary. He is the official record keeper of this, com uh, uh, this conference. If the conference committee votes something, uh, he documents it and uh, it stands. But if his signature isn't on it, then I guess we need to go back and have another meeting. And then God has blessed us with Sister or Elder uh, Mosley, who's our uh, treasurer, uh, the steward of all of God's fun. As God has blessed the membership, they send the funds, the tithe to the conference office, and she makes sure that we receive it and it is managed well in the eyesight of God. And then, of course, yours truly uh, works with the ministerial department, the ministers and evangelism. And then Sister Dr. Kim Gator, uh, who is the vice president of education, all of our schools, our students, she she has a burden for the Lord that all of our children will be taught of the Lord. And then there's Elder Franklin, who is the assistant to the president. Elder Franklin offer wisdom and experience to that to the rest of that support staff and the president so that he can remind us that the God of the past is still the God of the present. And he's certainly the God of the future. And then we have our departmental and ministry. Uh, uh, leaders, uh, Sister Sylvia Coleman. She operates our ABC uh, Books Center where we can order supplies and, and uh, books uh, to understand uh, the Word of God. And then there's Pastor Moses Edwards, who is our Religious Liberty Stewardship and Prayer Ministry Leader. Uh, and then there's uh, Pastor Alvin Freeman, who is the community service, he connects, he takes the, ch uh, the church outside of the walls uh, of the church. Our community service leader, our personal ministry leader, and our prison ministry leader. And then Sister Rosemary Graham, our disability leader or coordinator, she makes sure that the churches are, are, are prepared and equipped to receive those who uh, may have a, a, a problem or handicap or a disability. She goes from church to church preaching, remind us that God used uses us, whether we're at full strength or perhaps something may have happened to us along the way. And then there's Pastor Daryl Dar Howard, who's in charge of our Sabbath school department and our children's ministry. Uh, you've seen him all this week uh, operating the Vacation Bible School. That's his department. Pastor Don Kim is our uh, Korean ministry leader. Uh, he makes sure that the, uh, the Koreans in our church are certainly a part of the family of God and have their seat at the table here at South in South Atlantic Conference. And then there's Dr. James Lamb, who is our human resource and communication leader. He makes sure that the message gets out and he checks on us as workers, some 200 uh, workforce here in the South Atlantic Conference. He's our human resource leader. Uh, Brother David Mosley is our building engineer. He keeps the place looking good, looking sharp for the master because many people would never come into our headquarters, but they'll pass by. Mm -hmm. 
and they want to know, do you really serve the king? Mm -hmm. And then there's Elder P.A., a former president of this conference, and now leads out in our senior affair ministries. Then there's Rosa Park. Parker, uh, our women's ministry leader, I need not say anything. She's doing a fantastic job as she inspires our ladies of this conference to work and serve the Lord. And then there's Pastor Pelochi, our Hispanic uh, coordinator. Um, uh, oh, our, our Hispanic work is growing by leaps and bounds. He's cast a, cast a vision. I remember back in 1970s, there was only one. Hispanic church. And I believe now we have close to over 20. Uh, God has certainly blessed uh, him and his leadership. And then there's Melvin Preston, who is the family life ministry leader and coordinator uh, of this conference. Um, every February, this big, gigantic ministry, uh, Lover's Retreat. Mm -hmm. Um, that, that is sponsored throughout the conference, as well as zeroing in on the family. Whether I'm single or divorced, I'm still part of the family of God, and God expects me to serve him even uh, in 2021. And then there's James Reed, who is our national serviceman uh, coordinator. He connects with our young people who are interested in going into the arms, armed forces. So he talks to them. He gives them words of wisdom uh, as they contemplate God using them even in the armed force here in America. And then there's uh, Pastor Toussaint. Pastor Toussaint is our Haitian ministry leader, and that ministry is growing as well by leaps and bounds. I believe we have about now 10 Haitian congregations throughout the South Atlantic Conference. And then last but not least, there's Donovan Washington, Dr. Donovan Washington, who is our youth leader. He's making sure that our young people stay connected to the Church of the Living God. These are the people that God is using when you talk about South Atlantic and you're talking about the leadership in South Atlantic, these are the people that God is using in this day and time to build up the kingdom in the great South Atlantic Conference. Amen. Amen. And Pastor, I understand that um, during the pandemic, um, some of these leaders actually served as interim pastors in some of our churches. Yes, yes. Uh, the, 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 the church is ever growing and ministers are moving on, retiring. And sometimes we don't have enough full-time pastors to fill spots. And so these men in the office and ladies, these, they use their gifts for God in the churches. And so it's, when you talk about South Atlantic Conference, you're talking about 51,000 mm. members plus and the amazing thing about it, and I'll get into it a little later, amazing thing about it, during the pandemic, when the devil tried to stop us, mm. when he thought he had the tomb sealed, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. he forgot that God was on our side. And during the pandemic, mm -hmm. 500 people joined the family of Amen. the living God. Amen. And that is so because of the commitment of our leaders. They did not sit on their hands when the pandemic hit. In fact, um, it, because of the idea of our president, President Winston, we were able to launch the virtual ministry and individuals were blessed as a result of that. So our leaders are committed to the gospel ministry every single day. Pastor Winston tries to be our, our father, our counselor, mm -hmm. and he is. Mm -hmm. But he reminds us constantly of our mission, mm -hmm. which is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And we're not only spreading the gospel among, we're spreading the gospel far and wide. And that's one of the reasons why we launched this ministry. And what I like about the South Atlantic Conference is that we are a very diverse conference. As you saw, we have Korean ministry. We have also Haitian ministries here, as well as Hispanic churches in our midst. And as um, Pastor Preston just mentioned, we have over 20 Hispanic churches in our, con in our, in our conference. And now I want to focus on one of those churches, the Clinton Spanish Church. Um, Elder Perez is going to come to us and sing two songs, Holy, Holy, as well as Deserving of Praise. Enjoy as Elder Perez ministers to us. Enjoy as Elder Perez ministers to us. Señor, Santo, 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 Señor omnipotente. 
siempre labio mío Lores te dará Santo, santo, santo Te adoro reverente Dios en tres personas Bendita Santo, 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 en número socorro, santos escogidos te adoran sin cesar, de alegría llenos y sus coronas de oro, rinden ante el trono y el cristalino mar. Santo, 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 por más que estés velado, que imposible sea tu gloria contemplar. Santo, tú eres solo y nada hay a tu lado, en poder perfecto, pureza y Señor, Santo, 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 la gloria de tu nombre, vemos en tus obras el cielo, tierra y mar, Santo, 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 te adora. Personas bendita mariachi para todos nuestros hermanos americanos espero y lo disfruten merecedor de alabanzas es aquel que vino a salvarme Merecedor de alabanzas, pues siendo yo un pecador, no escatimó su linaje para morir en la cruz. Merecedor de alabanzas, por los siglos sea Jesús. Cristo yo te alabo, mi corazón te agradece, pagaste por mis pecados, aún siendo inocente, un sacrificio tan grande, no debe pasar por alto, tres veces te digo santo, aunque crean que estoy loco. sea el rey de reyes y señor de señores merecedor de alabanzas es aquel que vino a salvarme merecedor de alabanzas pues siendo yo un no escatimó su linaje para morir en la 
la cruz, merecedor de alabanzas por los siglos, sea Jesús. Mi Cristo, yo te alabo, mi corazón te agradece, pagaste por mis pecados, aún siendo inocente, un sacrificio tan grande, no debe pasar por alto, tres veces te digo santo, aunque crean que estoy loco. Santo, santo, santo. Spanish Church in North Carolina. We appreciate what all that you do for God's people and ministering to them on a weekly, weekly basis. At this time, we're going to focus on, as Pastor Preston uh, mentioned, we have also a number of schools um, led by Elder Kim Gator. Elder Gator, how many, help us understand some more about the education ministry that we have in the Great South Atlantic Conference. Um, how many schools do we have in North Carolina? So we have five schools in North Carolina, but to put it all in perspective, we are part of the we're part of the Southern Union, and there are eight conferences, and we have the largest number of schools of the regional conferences, and we're fourth the largest in the um, the union, and so I'm very proud to say that in the North Carolina we have five schools: Ephesus, Raleigh, Carolina Adventist. Yeah. We have uh, Greater Fayetteville, and we have Berean in Charlotte. Mm. So very, 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 very happy about those schools. Those are thriving schools, very active schools, growing schools. Yeah. And so the ministry of education, mm. the ministry of education mm -hmm. is what we're very excited about. Yes, and those men and women who stand in the classroom are ministers. Absolutely, ministers. absolutely. And, and what I appreciate about our education leaders and ministers is the fact that they put their lives on the line last year it's standing in the classroom in the midst of a pandemic absolutely all the schools that i named they were all in person mm -hmm. now some of our schools are very small meaning they have maybe um, 15 17 students and perhaps god wanted it that way because we were able to easily socially distance the blood was put over the door close prayers were given and we had no incidents amen, amen. of COVID. Amen. I mean, that's nothing but God. Amen, amen. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. God has been good to us. Yes. In fact, we've not had to shutter any school in the pandemic. In fact, our numbers grew. Our numbers grew. Amen. Our numbers grew, especially in those schools that were open. Mm -hmm. And so we know that people were looking for a safe haven for their, their children to go, a place where they could um, be taught of the Lord, where they could be sure that, it wasn't counterculture information, but it was information from God. And so we are so thankful that Adventist education, mm -hmm. Adventist education now more than ever is what's going on in our schools. And we are just, the, the five schools in North Carolina are doing a great job. Amen, amen. And Pastor, thank you very much, Elder Gator, for that information. Pastor Preston, we know that we have a number of churches and ministers in that um, great state of North Carolina. Give us some more information about the churches that we have there. Okay, in the state of North Carolina, we have 65 churches. Mm -hmm. uh, if you watched uh, us this morning, our pastor came from the Father's Church in the east part of North Carolina, Murfreesboro. Mm -hmm. But we stretched the whole uh, state mm -hmm. all the way over to Asheville, mm -hmm. North Carolina. 65 churches and companies uh, where we are preaching the truths of the living God. Mm -hmm. And then we have 27 pastors who are pastoring those churches, holding, standing in the gap holding up the bloodstained banner for Jesus Christ, and we appreciate each, every 27 of them. Yes, yes, definitely. As, as, as like the ministers in our classroom, these pastors basically braved the pandemic as well and made certain to continue ministry in the midst of the pandemic, and God has blessed them as a result. But the South Atlantic Conference not only covers North Carolina, but covers also South Carolina as well as Georgia. We're gonna get some more information 
regarding the ministries in those states. At this time, we want to feature you again with a selection from the Ephesus Church located in the great state of South Carolina. Um, be blessed as they minister to us.
call on it. He is my rock. Let's go up to a rock. Let's go up to a rock. I can call him in the morning. I can call him late at night. And let's go to the rock. Amen. We can go to the rock. We can go to the rock. Thank you very much, FSS, for reminding us that we can go to the rock. And it fits perfectly with our theme, which is Christ for the crisis. Christ for the crisis. And we thank FSS and the leadership of that church for the wonderful ministry that they're doing there. At this time, we're going to shift our focus from North Carolina to South Carolina. I'm going to ask Elder Preston again to give us some more information about the churches there, as well as the ministers who stand consistently before the people of God. South Carolina has been considered our, 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 our baby mm -hmm. <laughs> in the conference, but uh, that state is dear to me, very, very dear to me. Uh, we, have third, uh, we have 37 churches and companies in the great state of South Carolina, reaching from Greenville, uh, South Carolina, all the way down to the low country, mm -hmm. Charleston, uh, South Carolina. We have 17 pastors, 17 pastors who are standing in the gap, being the Moses to the children of God, leading them to the promised land. And again, we just appreciate those men of God who, who have dedicated their lives and service to serving God and leading God's people. Amen. And what I like about the South Atlantic Conference is that we not only care about the spiritual growth of our members, but also the, the, the academic development of our, our members as well. And we always provide opportunities for them to be educated in the ways of the Lord. And Elder Gator, I know that we have a number of schools there as well. So help us to understand not only the number of schools we have there, but also if someone is watching and wants to enroll their child or their scholar in one of our schools, um, how would they go about doing that? Oh, this is exciting. Yes. Um, you will want to, Berea mm. is in Sumter. Mm. That school is growing. They're actually adding a kindergarten this year. So we're really excited about that. Under the leadership of uh, Mrs. Debbie White James, they are really, really growing. And then we closed briefly last year our Pageland School in Pageland, South Carolina, um, Norma D. Richards. They are reopening. Mm. They already have 17 kids that are already registered. Um, that's under the leadership of Mrs. Tony Hollier. Um, it's very, very exciting. But let me go back to North Carolina because I don't want my good friend Joyce Harrison to fuss at me. She has been doing that daycare at the Winston-Salem Ephesus um, daycare, has been going thriving, thriving daycare. And also Sister Henrietta Bishop, they have a huge um, program for our early learning center at the Berean Seventh-day Adventist um, daycare there. And so both of those ladies have been carrying the early learning centers. Mm. So, but each of the places that I've named are open now and ready to register your child. These schools have not just, are not fly by night. Mm. They have been there. They are steady. They are strong. We have strong academics. We have loving teachers, competent, certified teachers that are ready to receive your child. Amen. And what is good about our schools is that our schools are fully accredited. Our Absolutely. schools are accredited. So you know when you send your child to our institutions, they're going to, as you said, not by not fly-by-night institutions, no. but actually no. accredited no. program. We're going to switch again. I know you came to listen to music. We, we don't want to deprive you of that opportunity. We're going to switch again to our Hispanic brothers up there in North Carolina. We're going to focus on the North, I'm sorry, Atlanta, Georgia, the North Gwinnett 
um, a Hispanic church under the leadership of uh, Pastor New Love. Now, this choir that you'll hear from briefly um, is led by Sister um, Gladys Rodriguez. Now, this choir was created in 2018, and their, their mission is to praise the Lord at all times. So we're going to be featured with two songs from this um, great church in North Gwinnett Hispanic Church as they minister to us. Please enjoy and let the Spirit of God bless you with um, the, the reassurance that he is in charge of our lives.
So, uh, so let me apologize for, for a second say. here. Um, the choir just sang it was not actually the North Gwinnett um, Hispanic Church, but actually the Chambly um, Hispanic Church, the Chambly Hispanic Church. Uh, thank you very much, Chambly, for that wonderful song, reminding us that God is, uh, we're standing on holy, we're standing on holy ground. Now, as we said at the top of our um, program here, that the South Atlantic Conference covers three states, North Carolina, South Carolina, as well as Georgia. We looked at North Carolina, the ministries there, our education ministries, as well as our pulpit ministry, and we looked at South Carolina as well. Now we're going to move to the state of Georgia. Um, Pastor Preston, I'm going to ask you again, just give us some more information on the churches in Georgia, as well as those who are ministering um, to God's people. There are 74, 74 churches and companies uh, throughout the great state of, of Georgia, all the way from Atworth, which is the northern part of Georgia, down to Savannah, which is on our coast, and then di uh, directly south, Blakely, Georgia, Albany, Georgia. God is, God's truth is truly marching on. And we have, and we have 38 pastors who are, who are leading these congregation by the grace and the power of God. Anointed men of, of, of the Spirit, mm -hmm. and we're growing day by day, but 38 pastors, 74 churches and congregations. Amen. Alligator, you mentioned earlier that we have um, early childhood centers um, in North Carolina, um, but we also understand um, in Georgia we have a senior academy as well. Give us some more information upon, uh, about the type of schools that we have here in Georgia. Well, we, you mentioned the Senior Academy, which is Greater Atlanta Adventist Academy. That's our premier school. We are very, very proud of it. Most students that we, in fact, we have a 98% graduation rate that goes straight to college. Now, that's, that's huge. Amen. That is huge. Mm -hmm. And not just graduate from college and then um, do um, and, and are fledgling. These young people go to places like Harvard, mm -hmm. Howard, Oakwood University, mm -hmm. Southern. I mean, so whatever school they want to go to, God has equipped the teachers to equip their minds to go. Adventist education at Greater Atlanta Adventist Academy is stellar. It's great. And guess what? We're going even higher next year. We have a new principal coming in, and I'll announce her name, and that is Dr. Denise Shaver. So we're looking for her to build on what's already there. We have um, connected with that school the Early Learning Center, which is Berean Christian Daycare Center. Um, Joanne Clark Brown is the director of that center. She's doing a, an amazing job. They were closed. As soon as they opened, pop, everybody wanted to return. And then we had Berean Christian Junior Academy. You know about that school, 100 years old. Yeah. They are, in this city, they are thought of highly regarded. And they're moving from just not saying we, we, we want to be a STEM school, but they're moving to a stream school, which adds that stream, adds in relationship, religion. And so we're just excited about that. That's Marcia Davis. She is the principal of that school, doing a wonderful job. We have um, also within the city, Lithonia Adventist Academy. They're doing a wonderful job. Over 50 kids there. We're expecting even more next year. All of these schools are equipped with state-of-the-art, um, top-notch, equipment, Promethean boards, you name it. And then we have um, um, AAIS, Atlanta International School, and that is Karen Taylor as our leader at that school, doing a phenomenal job. Um, we also have, um, I'm, I'm missing my place here, Decatur. How could I forget Decatur? How can I forget Decatur Adventist Junior Academy in Georgia, our largest school? In, in, in North Carolina, our Fayetteville school ha is, is already at 90 students. Georgia, we have Decatur under the leadership of Dr. Jasmine Johnson. And they will have over 100 school students wow. there this year. Wow. Um, listen, these schools are top notch. I say that and all of our constituents can really be very proud that you are contributing to a system, not just, not just any old system, a system that it's ordained by God, a system that you will know not only are they preaching and teaching every day, but these, school, these students are learning to be leaders, Christian leaders, as they move forward. And then outside of the metro area, we have Augusta, 
That's the Ebenezer School. Deidre Hodnett, who is there doing an, an excellent job. If you know Sister Hodnett, not only is she infusing the academics and all of that, she's got the music going. You should hear the choir. Um, and then we have outside of the Atlanta area, all the way down at Raymar Junior Academy, that's Mrs. Paula Blackwell. Now that school is, is really growing. They just added a new media center, gotten the funding for that. We are very, very thankful to the Davis family who actually contributed and gave a large sum of money mm. to make sure that that was equipped. Um, we have also in Macon, Georgia, Thomas and Henry is the principal there. And we have Albany, that is Yvette Davis. You saw last week, she's, she's leaving. So we're switching out. We're bringing from Carolina Adventist, we're bringing Mrs. Mahone down there to help to bolster that program even further. And um, I think I'm, I, oh, and one more school. I mean, there's so many. We have the, um, in Columbus, Georgia, we have Unique, Yannick LeBron. She is our principal there. She and Sister Laverne Scott are doing an excellent job in um, Columbia. All of these schools are ready for your student to join them. So please, as I say them, look them up. You are supporting them already. Let's put our students in there to train them to be the Army of Youth. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much for that information. Um, Pastor Preston, we know that uh, we're not only concerned about our young people, uh, uh, but we also are concerned about our mature saints. What are some of the services that we provide as a church to take care of those who are in the, um, the latter part of their ministry? Many do not know about it, but South Atlantic Conference sponsors four senior citizen uh, homes throughout the South Atlantic Conference. Uh, one is located in Georgia, in Valdosta, Georgia. Uh, when I say senior citizen housing, we're talking about a one-bedroom uh, independent living apartment. That's exactly what it is. And you only have to be 62 years young to, uh, to, to, to be a part of it. And so if you live in Valdosta, or if you want to move to Valdosta, we have a senior citizen house uh, apartment there. Uh, then in South Carolina, we have three. We have one in Orangeburg, and it housed 74 uh, uh, occupants. Uh, then we have one in Union, which is outside of Spartanburg, South Carolina. It housed 40, 54 units. And then Pine Ridge, which is in Somerville, which housed 75. These are independent, one-bedroom apartments that if you're 62 years old and you qualify, I must add that, um, then you can move in there. But South Atlantic Conference sponsored these things. That's our gift to the community in which we live. Wow. And when you say sponsor, what do you mean by sponsor? Give us more information on that. Sponsor means that it's owned and operated by the South Atlantic Conference of Seventh-day Adventists. South Atlantic Conference has a, a company that manages these departments. And by the way, I should have added, and there's one in Atlanta, which is operated by the, our, our, our mother church, the Berean Seventh-day Adventist Church. And so we literally operate under the guidelines of the federal government mm -hmm. But it belongs to South Atlantic Conference. Amen, amen. So we take care of not you, from the from the cradle all the way through the end of the ministries of our saints. And so, if you're looking for somewhere to uh, to uh, take care of your loved ones, please consider. Um, um, investing in one of yes. our uh, senior living communities there. If you if you want to know more about it, just call the conference office and 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 ask for me, and I'll put you in contact with uh, people in these areas that you might be qualified to live in. God take care of us from the uh, cradle all the way to the grave. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going to continue on with our songs here. We're going to now feature a church called the Northeast Church right there in Charlotte, North Carolina, the Northeast Church. They'll, our youth um, praise team will sing, I just came to praise the Lord. And afterwards, we will hear from them again, the adult praise team, and they will sing, Mighty, Mighty You Are. At this time, enjoy as they minister to us. Praise in worship time, and it's time for us to praise God and to show his, our love to him. I came to magnify the Lord, and I'm happy that I have a human. I can give God praise, 
and I can be able to shout in, in joy and to know that my Redeemer is who saved me. He's past our faults, but still supplies our needs. Yes, thank you, Jesus. That's mighty. Oh, God. Here we go. Lord God. Lord God Almighty. You are clothed in majesty, the heavens declare your wonders, for you are great and do marvelous things, for you alone, my God, there is no one else like you. Let the nations declare 
that you have done greatly. Mighty you are, holy you are, your mercy endure it forevermore. Righteous you are, great you are, I will exalt you, O Lord, my God, my King. Come on, everybody, say, Lord. Forever and ever, God. You're God that will never fail. Righteous? Because you're the King of Kings. Because you're the Lord of Lords. I will exalt you, O Lord. My God. My King. Come on, mighty you are. God, you are mighty. And yes, you're so holy. Your mercy endures forever. Forevermore. Righteous you are, God. Righteous you are. Great you are, I will exalt you, O Lord, oh Lord. My, my God, God my, and my King. King. Come on, here we go. For you, For you alone, are God. alone are God. There is no one else like you. Because you're the one true and living God. Let the nations so please let the nations declare that you, that you have done have done, you've done so great many great things. things. And it's so great that sometimes we lose the words. So we just say, oh, here we go. Sing, oh. oh because you are great. Oh, and you're greatly to be praised. Oh, and God, we will never cease. Oh, never cease to bless your name. Oh, because when I find, think about the sticky situations oh, I find myself in, I recognize oh, that you don't allow me to get the consequences that oh, I deserve. Come on, let's take it up and keep singing, oh. oh me in spite of me because no matter how foolish I act no matter how many times I ignore your word you still love me and when I wonder how it is that you can separate me from my sin as far as the east is from the west I know that the only explanation is because God you are mighty come on mighty you are and holy you are mighty enough to save me in spite of me Mighty enough to love me, but sometimes I don't love myself. Mighty enough to forgive me when I do silliness. We'll exalt you, O Lord, my God, and my King. Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Northeast. I uh, appreciate the ministry that you have um, been doing there in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, uh, Elder Gator just mentioned to me that she forgot to mention one uh, ministry in um, one of our states and would like to spend a few minutes discussing that ministry, Elder Gator. Um, I really want to say something about more than just one thing, so I got, I got you. Um, <laughs> um, what I really wanted to put a thrust in and put an appeal to all of God's children across South Atlantic Conference we need your help to pray for our schools, pray for our teachers, to pray for our students. We are pushing forth to go to excellence in Christ. We believe Christ is soon to come. We want all of our children to have access to Adventist Christian education. And so I wanted to mention Sister LaToya who runs the, the Pecan Grove um, daycare center in Orangeburg, South Carolina. She's doing a fabulous job there and has been there for many years. Didn't want to overlook her. I also want to, 
to remind you to pray for our GFA school, our Greater Fayetteville Adventist Academy, where they have 90 students already registered, ready to come, but they need a larger building. Won't you keep them on your prayer list? We also want to pray for our new principal um, in Raleigh, Mrs. Mabry, that she's going to be taking that school to higher heights. And Dr. Pullins, who will be the new principal at Berean Junior Academy, keep him on your prayer list. We know that God has his hands on our schools. We will not round our shoulders. We will square our shoulders knowing that God is for us. So um, we, I just wanted to put a plug in there for those schools. Also, Ephesus Junior Academy in Winston-Salem is adding a kindergarten next year. You see how God is growing our schools? He's growing them by leaps and bounds for his cause and for his work. And so we thank you so much for your support, all of the members across this conference. Thank you. Amen. Thank you very much, Elder Gator, for the work that you're doing in that area. Um, in education, our conference is in a better condition um, because um, yeah, the conference is doing well um, because of the schools, the, 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 the teachers that we have. So thank you very much for the work that you're doing in that area. Elder Preston, I just want to say this before we close our program. We have a couple more songs to play. I just want to say that you've done a marvelous job in this camp meeting. I saw um, firsthand the type of work that you did um, every single day in making certain that this camp meeting was an awesome camp meeting. Christ for the crisis clearly reflected you as an individual and we wanted to say i just want to say thank you very much for the work that you did so uh, for this past camp meeting for this camp meeting it's been a marvelous opportunity to watch you work thank you but uh it really goes to the team that was behind the scene and i'm sure our president is going to say some things about it just in a few minutes but it's a team i know very little about technology but i do know about a team and there's a wonderful team that's behind all of this and i'll just give away to the president at that at his appointed time to to mention the team amen and what um, elder Preston has done is gathered a, a collection of musical talent um, that we've um, seen on display for the past couple days and we thank him for the work he's done we're going to feature uh, some more of our hispanic brothers and sisters as they minister in music we're going to look right now go to the chambly um, SDA uh, Chambly Hispanic Church and they're going to sing a song called Go Light the World Go Light the World and after they perform we'll be um, featured two songs from the Gwyneth um, the North Gwyneth Hispanic Church there in Atlanta here in Atlanta Georgia so after we uh, we've we've listened to Go Light the World by the Chambly Hispanic Church then we'll be featured with two songs from the North Gwinnett SDA Church, um, Hispanic Church. Thank you very much for the ministries these um, leaders are doing in these churches. We've been blessed so far. So be blessed as they minister to us in song.
Dios, no hay otro Dios. Con humildad nos postramos al darle honor. Maravilloso Dios, poderoso Dios. Un gran rayo que desde al son de su
venceremos, venceremos unidos. Siempre que haya amor, siempre que haya amor, siempre que haya amor, venceremos. Estamos unidos. Thank you very much again for the ministry. I want to thank Pastor New Love for the work that he's doing. Um, we were blessed, as Alligator said just now, even though he don't speak Spanish, um, the, the gospel is universal. And so we thank God for the ministry of our churches in music. I, I hope you were blessed today as you um, spent some time with us. Again, as I said earlier, we are excited that you chose to spend this evening with us. Now, Pastor uh, Preston, I know that we're not satisfied. God has been good to us over the past 75 years. But I know we're not satisfied with where we are. What are some of the things that we are doing, we will do as a conference to continue to grow the ministry of the gospel? Our purpose for existing is to spread the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, be it through the schools or through, through the churches. Our purpose, our purpose for existing, the blood that runs through our veins is evangelism. We've been saved so that we can help save someone else. That's what we're about. And so we're asking the churches, July the 18th through the 31st, mark it down. Every church in our conference can be blessed by what is about to happen. Almost home, almost home. 10 night event, event from July the 18th through the 31st. Pastor Snell, I know you've heard of him. The pastor of the First Church in Huntsville, Alabama, uh, will be our guest speaker. And night after night, he will present the word of God. We've been blessed by great artists, Benita Jones, uh, Van Sean Mitchell, Bernard Williams. They will be singing what we're wanting you to do. Invite a friend. Hey, Plan a dinner on the opening night on July the 18th. Plan a dinner at 7 o'clock and invite your friends and your neighbors over and have a good time. And then turn, put this on your television and let the word of God, let the word of God be heard in every home, in every church in the South Atlantic Conference. Please mark the date down, July the 18th. Through the 31st, our theme, Almost Home, Almost Home. You can share it with anybody and everybody. And I know that some of us have spouses who have left the fold. Let's invite them home. Some who have never joined this church, turn it on. Let them hear it. Some of us have children that we want back into the ark of safety. And then we have relatives who've never heard of this wonderful message of God's saving grace. Invite them. Share the link. We'll put a link uh, out real soon that you can share with them. And Christian friends, somebody, somebody will be baptized because the word of God will not return void. Please mark the date, July 
18th through the 31st, theme sponsored by the South Atlantic Conference, Almost Home. I know you'll be blessed. Please, please tune in to it. Thank you, Elder Preston, and thank you, uh, Elder Gata and Elder Brown, for a tremendous program this evening. We have come to the end of another camp meeting. It's time to break camp, to load the cars and the trucks, and to get on the road. There's no, um, there are no plants to give away. There's no snack bar. There's no basketball tonight. Uh, we just... Uh, simply shut down our computers and close out camp meeting privately to ourselves. Uh, but God has been good to us. I was asking a few minutes ago if there was a way to turn the camera around and get a shot. I've been to a couple of plays and they have the whole crew march out in front of the camera. I'm tempted to do that. I'm tempted to have you put down your mics and your... In fact, let's do that. Let's just do that. C come on, come on, come on, crew. Come on, march in front of the camera uh, let us let us see those who have done this work and kept us here. Come on, Dr. Lamb, Teresa Blakely here on on this side of me ha has has been making sure that you can hear us. Uh, Rashad Madison has made sure that those who are on camera kept us on camera. Dr. James Lamb, when you got up at 8 o'clock in the morning and you saw that, that video presentation every morning, Dr. Lamb was behind that, recorded all of the pre-recording and everything. And then Yurik Ladonis, who, who has kept everything hooked up and connected. We thank you all for a beautiful, beautiful camp meeting. You all have done a fam fabulous job. Thank you very much, Ella Preston. Thank you for your uh, generalship and, and cracking the whip. Uh, God has been good. God has been good, and we appreciate this. But it's time that camp meeting ends. Yes, Ella David Smith, Ella Rakita Mosley, uh, part of the team. Uh, I don't know if I see Brother Henry Cantrell back there, but uh, thank you. All of the music, everything has just been tremendous. But my mother had five siblings, and my father had 12 and you would think with that many aunts and uncles and cousins that somebody would live down the block, or around the corner, or at least across town. But the closest relatives that we had were 500 miles away. Well, no, 300 miles. They were in Charleston, South Carolina. And my, my mother's step-parents lived right here in Atlanta on Sharon Street over in Mosley Park, 400 miles away. But we never got much time to see our family. But when they came to visit, when they came to Durham, North Carolina to see Sam and Sharon Winston and their kids, it was always too short. It was always over before we knew it. But when, when it was time to leave, there, there were several things that happened, three things specifically. Now, I have to remind you of this. This was, this was prehistoric time, young people. Uh, this was before cell phones. This, this was before um, black people could stay in hotels when they traveled on the road. This was before we could eat in restaurants. This was back in the dark ages, long time ago. But whenever, whenever my, my family came to leave, three things that would happen. We would, we would, first of all, my mother would pack a lunch for them. Fried chicken, cake and pie, fresh fruit and lemonade because they couldn't eat in restaurants. Remember that? My mother would pack them a lunch and, and make sure they had enough food to get them home. Second thing, we would always, we would always drive them out to the highway. I don't know why we did that. Well, there was no GPS, but we would get in the car and lead them out and then point the ramp, say, that's, get on right there. And we waved to them and we toot the horn and we say bye. But before we did those two things, before the lunch and before leading them on the highway, we said, make sure you call us when you get home. Like Aretha Franklin saying, call me the moment you get there. Make sure you call me when you get home and let us know you got there safely. Now, I'm going to age myself again. Back in the day, there were two kinds of phone calls. There was a station to station and a person to person. 
a station. So station, you just dialed the number, and whoever picked up the other end of the phone and started talking to you, you would be in charge a whole lot by the minute. But then you can make something called a person-to-person -person call, and you could ask for the person you wanted to talk to. Hello, this is operator. And my mama's sister, Fanny Gatewood, would always call us. And she said, may I, may I speak to Fanny Gatewood? So the operator called. This is operator. We have a person-to-person -person call for Fanny Gatewood. Is she there? And, of course, we said, no, Ms. Gatewood is not here. And we knew she was on the phone because we could hear her talking to the operator, too. I'm sorry, Ms. Gatewood is not here. Do you know when she'll be back? No, we don't. All right, thank you very much. And she'd go back and say, Ms. Gatewood is not there. Thank you, goodbye. Well, what happened then is you hung up. There were no charges. No, no, you didn't talk to anybody, but you got your point across. I'm home, safely, safely. And we did that all the time. Y'all did it too. Don't even act like you didn't. But, but that's how we knew you got them. No cell phone. No, no tracking on GPS. So, so that meant that everything was fine. Three things. Food for your journey. Point us in the right direction. And call me the moment you get there. Three things very important. Genesis 31, 49. I'll close with this. Mizpah. And Mizpah simply means watchtower. That's what the word Mizpah means, a watchtower, a, a, a witness monument. And this is where Laban and, and Jacob, Jacob has, has left with Laban's daughters who are now his wives and his grandchildren and his cattle and stuff. Jacob just took off and Laban had chased him down and was ready to do him bodily harm until God says, don't say anything, don't, don't even speak to him, don't even talk to him. But Laban did. And, and they settled their dis differences. And here's what the Bible says in Genesis 31, 49. The Lord watch between me and thee when we are absent one from another. So tonight as we close camp meeting 2021, I pray that the Lord should he delay his coming another year and we, we, we have another camp meeting 2022 that we will be alive and well and be able to be a part of camp meeting 22. But until then, I pray that the Lord will put food on our tables. I pray that he would keep us in the straight and narrow. And I pray that we, you and I, you and me, us, that we would call each other's names to the Lord and ask the Lord's blessings upon us until we're together again. God bless you. God bless you. Two, two last things before I pray. Your church is free to open. We have, we have given that okay for your church to follow COVID protocols and reopen uh, if you voted to do so, so your churches can reopen. I miss one person as I looked around the room. I miss Alton Scott. Where's Alton? Alton is, is techie too. Alton, is he in? Alton, Alton Scott, uh, who is our IT person here at the conference office, is an integral part of this. And then all of the office staff, departmental people, you saw them all during the week, doing prayer and doing welcomes and all. All of the support staff, you saw them all during the week. Um, we're going to exhale for a day or two. The office will be closed on Monday. We'll be, we'll be celebrating just the end of camp meeting, and we'll be celebrating Juneteenth. On Monday, that's our holiday. And we'll be back in here Tuesday, uh, eager to serve and ready to serve. And we anticipate being back to full strength here in the office on uh, the, the Tuesday following the 4th of July. So thank you. God bless you. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your prayers. And may the Lord richly, richly bless you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your grace and your mercy. And you do put food on our tables, Lord, and you do keep us in the straight and narrow. And, and you do bless us as we call upon your name. So be with us. We, we don't know what tomorrow holds. We don't know what next week holds. None of that's promised to us. But should you delay your coming and should you allow us, should you allow us to see another camp meeting on this earth, I pray that we'll be safe, and in good health, and using the gifts that you have given us to hasten your soon coming. Thank you for all of those who participated. Thank you for all of those who attended. Thank you for all of those who text us and, and emailed us words of encouragement. Thank you, Lord. 
And as we begin again, the work of the gospel, may your blessings attend us, we pray in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Don't cut me just yet. Don't cut me just yet. I don't know who this was that just had to call me right now, but my pocket is buzzing. Let me see if this is something I need to say to the group. No. God bless you. Have, have a good rest of the summer. Good night. Thank you.